Hey everybody, it's Sophie and Marco dishing out on the movies. Hey, we're still doing Stephen King. Our next Stephen King movie for this week is Rose Red, a three-episode TV miniseries that premiered in 2002. Rose Red is based on a real house called the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. At the end of the review, I'll talk a little about the Winchester House and how its history compares to the Rose Red story. Professor Joyce Reardon, played by Nancy Travis, who works in the psychology department, wants to elevate her standing in the psychology field by proving that a nearby mansion nicknamed Rose Red is filled with active spirits. Rose Red is a haunted mansion, that's what everybody says, built, and I put that in quotes, by John and Ellen Rimbauer in 1909. I say built in quotes because long after the Rimbauers died, the house mysteriously builds itself. At least that's what people say because they can hear the sounds of construction coming from the mansion. Now here's something. Why would it be bad if the house was finished? Like, if, if the ghost finished building the house, why would that be bad? I don't know if it was bad. Just kept, it just, how does a house build itself? Okay. Which makes it haunted. Okay. So, uh, Professor Reardon gathers a group of psychics with a range of different abilities to draw out the spirits during a Memorial Day weekend sleepover at the mansion. Unfortunately, her department chair, Professor Carl Mil Miller, played by David Dukes, thinks her research is BS and has her tenure revoked, which unfortunately is not something I believe happens in real life. If it does happen, it would be rare. Professor Miller hires a campus reporter Kevin Bollinger, played by Jimmy Simpson, to embarrass Professor Reardon at the end of her class while he, while he watches from a viewing area above the lecture hall. I mention this only in order to show the hostility by Professor Miller towards Professor Reardon and also that the reporter will play a role in the story moving forward. Professor Reardon's cast of assorted psychics whom she hired to draw out Rose Red's spirits are Nick, who claims he is a little bit of everything, played by Julian Sands, and Matt Ross as Emery, whose mother Kay, played by Laura Kenny, is a shopping addict and constantly smothering him. I mention her only because she will become a part of the story later too. Melanie Linsky is Rachel Wheaton, who has no psychic powers of her own, but is accompanying her sister Annie, played by Kimberly J. Brown, an autistic 15-year-old girl who is both a powerful telepathic and psychokinetic. Professor Reardon is aware of Annie's amazing powers and really wants her to be a part of the group more than anyone else. The rest of the psychic crew are Emily Deschanel, playing Pam, who is a touch nail, a person who sees things that have already happened or feels some kind of emotion tied to an object she touches. Then there's Kathy, played by Judith Ivey, who is an automatic writer, someone who gets a message from a spirit and writes it similar to people spelling out messages on a Ouija board. Finally, Kevin, I don't know how you pronounce it, Ty, uh, is George, a precognitive person who has the ability to see things about particular people nearby. Along for the ride is Matt Kiesler as Stephen Rimbauer, and he is Ellen Rimbauer's grandson. He is not psychic, and it looks like Joyce is using him as a boyfriend so she can have access to the mansion over the weekend. Interestingly, once Stephen enters the mansion, as a child he only went there once, he will gain some psychic ability because of his family ties to the Rose Red Mansion. As I said before, 
Rosebread was built by Ellen and John Renbauer in January 1909. And people say it's haunted because several deaths and di disappearances are associated with it. During the initial stages of the mansion's construction, several workers were killed, and the deaths didn't stop there. After they moved into the house, for example, a bee stung a man in the solarium and he died of an allergic reaction. Also, one of Rimbauer's ex-business partners named Posey hung himself in the living room by the fireplace in front of the Rimbauer's two children. April, a little blonde girl with a withered arm, and eight-year-old Adam, who is Stephen's, Stephen Rimbauer's grandpa. After that incident, Adam was sent away to boarding school while April continued to live with her mother. April also eventually disappears one day in the kitchen when Helen's companion, Zucchina, played by C.D. Laloka, turns her back momentarily. Mr. Rembauer blamed Zucchina for April's disappearance and had her hauled down to the police station for a 50-hour interview where her teeth got knocked out and they broke a wrist. Along with April, the little girl, five women, and 18 men have disappeared. And that last woman who disappeared did so in 1972, 22 years after Mrs. Rembauer's death. As I said before, after Ellen's husband committed suicide, Mrs. Rimbauer kept building onto the house, and even when she disappeared at age 70 in 1950, the house kept building itself. There's a lot more made-up history, but back to the story of today. Professor Reardon takes her merry band of psychics along with her fake boyfriend, Stephen Rimbauer, and they head to Rose Red for the Memorial Day weekend. She is paying each one $5,000, except for Annie, who she's giving $12,000 because of her extremely powerful abilities. Unbeknownst to them, though, the reporter Bollinger sneaked inside the house before they arrived. And the group found evidence, like his camera and cell phone. Care to guess what happened to him? Just as Professor Reardon wanted, the house has already woken up without the psychics even being there, and it's a guess as to who survives the weekend and who doesn't. Go ahead, Marco. Oh, you're done? Yep. Cool. Uh, I used to watch this movie a lot as a kid, even though it was, uh, it was so long. And that, that's actually one of, one of the problems I used to have with the movie was it was so long. And also, I used to not like anybody in the movie. Because, I mean, really, I liked horror movies with strong characters and with uh, cool monsters. And in this movie, the monsters are mostly, are mostly bad CGI. I mean, when I when I say bad CGI, I mean like uh, PS1 video game animation CGI. And the main villain villains of the movie are not intimidating at all. They're actually kind of dopey. I mean, I mean, I talked about. I just posed the question: What would be so bad about them finishing the building of the house? There's no answer for that from Safi or Stephen King because Stephen King was too focused on talking about uh, stuff on Twitter he doesn't need to be talking about. <laughs> and uh, other questions like that. I mean, all they want to do is finish building the house. So what would be so bad about the house being finished building? Number two, this team of psychics aren't very smart. To begin with, at the beginning of the movie, they they want to use a rope to to sort of uh, know where they're going in case the house changes or in case they get lost. They use a rope. Well, the the rope connects each one to the other. It's kind of like being in a huge blizzard, and uh, people tie ropes around each other, and so 
they don't get lost because the house is so big and it changes and you can get get lost and who knows where it could happen and then guess what they give that up they say oh, who cares no nothing's gonna happen it's just you know who cares we're psychics but we can't even tell that uh something bad's gonna happen i mean a lot of them walk off by themselves like idiots and it's just very frustrating there are a couple of characters who are who are really cool and they're smart one of the best characters in the movie is emory and the reason why is because he's he's like one of the smartest people if not the smartest person in the movie all the rest of them kind of go insane and in fact we'll talk about that in the spoiler video them going insane and not doing what would be best for the group especially one person and i think this movie is is kind of it's it's pretty entertaining i wouldn't watch it again for a while because the music that's one of the biggest problems with the movie the music the music is very overbearing and annoying and uh unpleasant in the sense that you wouldn't want it to be unpleasant in fact it gave me a headache listening to this movie because the music i mean the music is constantly playing over and over and over again it's basically like if Sophie did her whole opening uh, introduction over and over and over again. You had to listen to that. Like, oh, just in case you didn't hear that, over and over and over again. That's what it is. What do you think, Sophie? Do you think I've made some fair analysis points? Uh, well, I don't care for Emery all that much but he's he is an interesting character and what's funny is a lot of spirits seem to appear to him more than anybody else which is really strange yeah a lot of things Even happen to Stephen him <laughs> a lot of things happen to him and like he's like he's supposed to be the true main character yeah and um my least favorite character is well i i didn't care for him that much but he's interesting the one the professors really irritated me and yeah, pissed I hate me the off professor. i didn't like the way the department head all he it was like he was so laser focused on destroying the career of this other professor and i think that was awful and then i so he and he comes off and he's not nice to anybody either he's he's not even nice to bollinger who he's using to mess up uh, uh professor reardon but i didn't like professor reardon either because i think that she's let her research interest overwhelm her ability to uh deal with people in a humane way Basically, she's using everybody to achieve her means, and and she really like goes insane during the movie, and she doesn't care. I mean, people get hurt, people disappear, and she just doesn't seem to care. It's all about her research. <coughs> Sorry. So I those two were really horrible. My least favorite characters, for the record, are the professor, definitely, the main professor. She's, she's really annoying, and, uh, she's, I don't know, I don't, I don't like her at all. And then my second least favorite character, that's, that's hard to choose, because there are characters who make stupid choices, but I still kind of like them. I guess my second least favorite character would be uh, Ellen uh, Rimbauer because she's supposed to be the main focal point of the movie, her history, and I don't find her story interesting. I don't find the history interesting or entertaining, so I guess by default that would be the most interesting to me, least interesting to me. So who are your favorite characters? 
Well, I really like Stephen Renbauer, and I also like uh, Rachel, who is Annie's uh, sister, but she doesn't really have that strong or big of a part. It's just she seems really kind and nice and supportive to everybody, and, and her sister, who is really... She's not only autistic, but she has these amazing powers, and she hasn't been easy to deal with. I, I don't know how to say it. And so she's just trying to help her any way she can, so I like that. And then I like Stephen Reardon, who he knows he's being used by Professor Reardon, and he's he seems kind to everybody, helpful, supportive, and he also, at the end, he knows they've got to go. And he's just uh, he, he's just a really kind person. He's kind of boring to me. He is. Well, it's better to I be. I prefer Nick. Nick is, Nick is real. I really like Nick the best. Um, just like in the stand, by the way. Nick in the stand, Rob Lowe, Nick and Rose Red. Uh, random British guy. He doesn't let anybody <laughs> uh, get away with saying stupid stuff, like the professor makes some stupid remark. He's not afraid to put her in her place. He's not afraid to put Emery in his place when he makes some dumb remark. He tries to be, he tries to be supportive to everybody. He, his psychic ability, he calls it it's all over the place, which means he has a strong ability ability to like read what's going on he seems to be a little overpowered though like he he doesn't really show any weakness in the entire movie no. until this one moment where he says you know what i'm scared that's what he, that's literally a line from the movie by the way i'm not making that up for comedic effect <laughs> so i i'd actually like to see a whole movie with just him in Emory because their interaction makes this movie more entertaining and interesting because they're constantly battling each other yes and it's too bad that that didn't come into play more in the movie I was expecting like the ghost to either possess Nick or possess Emory and then they would have to have some sort of a conflict with each other or something like that but there, there's a lot of unexpected turns and let's just first explain that Stephen King while writing this movie he he was suffering from uh, problems from a car crash that he had so he was not in his right mind writing this movie and you can tell a lot of this movie is basically The Shining and I mean, I could go down to the slightest detail. I mean, every little detail, every single one. The main female, Professor Joyce, she's like Jack from The Shining. I'm not even kidding. She's like a lighter, less interesting version of Jack. And then the little girl, she's like Danny. And just all sorts of stuff. I mean, every single aspect of this movie. But it kind of feels like a tribute, and that's what I like about it. It's a very Stephen Kingy type of movie. There's good setups, but the payoff is stupid and terrible. That's exactly what happens in this movie. Although I didn't, I'll say this: I didn't like the setup in this movie as much as the one in the stand. Like you were talking about how you didn't like the first part of the stand. I like that setup more than I like the setup for this movie where Joyce does a does an information dump presentation and it takes like an entire hour. Yeah. What do That's you think? at least a third Well this is my favorite Stephen King movie. Still? Because I think there are a lot of good scares in it. And even before the people go to the mansion. I'll just say Emery because he has the mo he has for some reason. Yeah, I'll say there's some good scares. 
start that the ghosts start bugging him and they're not even there yet so not a lot but just a little bit but still they're already uh, uh, bothering people but I like the scares I think that there's a lot and and it's they're surprising some of them are surprising and I think it's a good story and I know Marco doesn't like the history but I guess no, I because don't. I'm a history person uh, I like some I, of it. I, I, the reason why I just thought it was well done because it's all fabricated and for the mo most part it bore little resemblance to what really happened I prefer the history and the shining well which is that's also, a different story uh, no not really and I did want to say I don't think Stephen King does have a cameo in this movie it's not like um, thinner where he really had a, a really a, a regular part it wasn't very big but uh, all he does is deliver pizza but it's funny because he has this little exchange with Emery and with the professor mostly Emery and it it was funny can we just give away the, the best scares in this movie no why not no I the only thing what about I, without context I'll just say it without context because I know <laughs> a lot of people who are watching this review have already seen the movie probably well not necessarily but I really I'll, I mean, I'll, we don't know that I'll go very big the refrigerator scene that's number one at near the beginning that, and that that's the to, emery I, I said I was going to be big and you just gave stuff away. That's all I did. Unbelievable. Away. Well, you're the one who did it. Unbelievable. And that that always used to freak me out as a kid. And that's that still is a really, really good scare. I, I really like the way that it's done. I like the camera, how the, the camera's inside the refrigerator uh, looking out at him. And I, 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 didn't, I don't like the creature effects. I think they're kind of boring looking. And the second scare without context is uh, the finger scene. Oh, that's gross. That's the grossest, I think, scene. It wasn't gross to me, but it, it was very, it, it's very Graphic. shocking. And shocking. Well, and also, I the only spoiler I was going to say, and I already, the reason why I just want to say is Bollinger, that reporter, and I said how he was, he went to the mansion ahead of them. I, I guess he was just going to spy on them. I have no idea what he was supposed to be doing. He was going to really. take pictures of them, uh, basically, oh, okay. not finding anything. Well, right after he goes in, he, he, ha he, He's the first to go. I'll just, I won't say anything else. And Sophie! So, and, well, that's all I'm going to say. And, and he haunts the group for the rest of the movie. I mean, he is there. He pops up like he's a like jack the, in the box all the throughout ghost. the movie. Yeah, he is. He's the main, well, he is one of the main ones. I guess Ellen Renbauer is a ghost. But anyway, he pops up like a jack in the box all throughout the movie. And he's even there at the very end. So, uh, I just wanted to say that. I mean, I, I, I've already mentioned that they're not all going to survive. So, uh, anyway, that's we weren't going to give too many spoilers because I've already... It's such a lengthy review. There's just... Because there's this huge history, and then you have the movie, the, the story itself, It's it adds on to it, makes it lengthy, so... I would say watch it though because it's it's good. It's, it's very disappointing. <laughs> because of the scares, I I would, you won't be disappointed. I would recommend watching it uh, and playing some sort of a Stephen King drinking game, or watching this movie at a party with people. But I would not recommend watching this movie uh, expecting a, a a great movie like you're gonna you're gonna get really scared. You're gonna you're going to really think it's like the best thing ever. Well, watch it for fun. Of course, watch all these for fun. Well, I mean not like expecting a good movie, like expecting mediocrity. 
been kind of a huge letdown by the end, especially with the the final quote twists. And we'll talk about that in the spoiler discussion. We're not going to do a spoiler discussion. Oh, yes, we are. Okay, well, anyway, I just wanted to talk about a little bit in the history and how it differs from the real thing. Remember I said that Rose Red is is uh, kind of based very, very loosely on the Winchester Mystery Mansion in San Jose, California. And Mrs. Winchester's uh, husband made the Winchester rifle. That's how they got all their money. And so I'll talk about that later, but her husband died at an early age and he had TB. He didn't commit suicide or get killed. He had TB and back then a lot of people got that sickness. She also had, they had one little baby who had a uh, marasmus, which I looked it up, it's malnutrition, which is kind of odd if, they so, if they're so rich, how could their baby die of malnutrition? So there must be more to it, not in a negative way, but just more to the sickness than I'm not seeing. Anyway, when after these two deaths, she is very upset. She went to see a medium, just like in the movie, and the person told her that she needs to go out west, because they were living in Connecticut, and build a house, and that will... And to keep building, because that will get rid of the negative spirits that were mad at her husband, like Native Americans, for example, for inventing the Winchester rifle, sorry, because soldiers were using that to kill Native Americans. So she did that. She got a house out in the San Jose area, although that was in a country that wasn't in San Jose proper back then, and built and built and built. And uh, from that point on, she added on, and until 1920, then she just passed away from old age. And the house didn't keep building itself. And I just wanted to say, it has like 10,000 windows. And there's tours every day of the house for Christmas. And Marco and I were very lucky this past summer to visit the mansion, thanks to my daughter-in-law, Stephanie. It was a very beautiful place, and as far as haunted, there was only one cold room in the house, but it didn't bother us at all. It's more like a museum, and it's also registered on the National Register of Historic Places. What's your rating, Sophie? Well, I gave the movie a huge pizza <laughs> with everything on it except anchovies, banana peppers, and ground beef. Oh, so not everything on it. I did that because to represent all the different psychics, but also because Stephen King delivered pizza, pizzas and soda, to the psychics in the house. Yeah, I also, the psychics yeah. don't drink beer, they drink soda. Well, I don't know why they didn't have alcohol. Maybe it was the cost, but they only had soda and um, um, pizza, but there is a wine cellar in the house, and at one point they do, and there's tons of wine there, bottles of wine, perfectly good. They're probably very uh, valuable. Expensive. Expensive and valuable, because, yeah. I mean, they've been there 